the large general contractors are now looking at the GCCM type projects as as a very attractive platform because what it does is it allows the general contractor basically under an, it's a negotiated platform where they come in with the base price and then from there they, they basically procure their contractors as they see best suited for the scope of work. And usually in these large projects like Brightwater which was just wrapped up as of last year, there's I think 1.2 billion, it's a very expensive project and there's many, many subcontractors on that, on that, on that job. And what Hoffman did is they hired a, a, a team or an individual to oversee all small business and um, disadvantaged business goals for the project. And from that conduit, they advertised these scopes of work to meet those goals. And, and in doing that, getting your name out to these conduits is the most important important thing you can possibly do because, um, of course, Hoffman trusts that this resource will provide them the best suited firms for these needs. So I think, one, advertising is, is a very, very important thing to do. Elcon Corporation is a subcontractor. We have our own database that we keep in-house. We're never in a general contracting role. So what we do is we actually provide outreach. We go through the database, which is uh, contained on the website through uh, the Washington State, identify subcontractors that can work within our typical scope of work. We ask them to answer a few questions about uh, their bonding capacity, their familiarity with certain scopes, and we have an in-house database that we use when we have, when we have uh, goals or we want to bring people on board. We go to that database and we ask them if they're interested in pursuing the job with us. Uh, and then typically we bid to a general contractor with, with that team in hand. Uh, now, GCs do it differently because they're a general contractor, not a specific scope concentrated identity. So there, that's where they hire these companies to oversee that. Dan, uh, at Platinum Business, I believe that's part of your specialty. You, you're very well networked, and, and Dan is a great resource. Right now, in terms of expanding that platform in, at CPARB, uh, CPARB oversees RCW 3910, which gives permission to the general contractors and the state, public owners, to use that platform to award work. And it's just right now going through a sunset clause reauthorization through JLARC, uh, which is the Judicial Legislative Audit Review Committee. And uh, they've put together the report and they have certain goals that CPAR must enforce and provide suggestions on how to change the statute to make sure these ideas are maintained. Uh, in many of these parts of the current code, uh, there are modifications which, uh, which promote small business for growth. But I suggest if you're interested in, in, in having your voice heard, these meetings which are typically held every month or every other month, it's very important to, to attend because right now, the biggest struggle subcontractors, small businesses have on this board is a voice. There's very little participation. Um, there's quite a few GCs on the board, uh, but other than that, there's very little participation from the subcontractors, and, and that's where we need help. So if, if you want to feel like you can be a part of this moving forward, having you there is, is a huge asset. Uh, no, no questions about it. So I think that would be the first place to go and start understanding exactly where policy is and then it's a great networking platform too because you'll have members from Hoffman Construction, Turner Construction, uh, Stacy Whitback, all these types of contractors, uh, Skanska, all these contractors are in this GCCM game pretty deep. And uh, beginning there would be best and then uh, the opportunities and, and the know-how of projects coming up uh, will be f first and foremost. That organization that he mentioned is responsible for reviewing and influence over billions of dollars of work within this state. So you may not think your voice will be heard, but there's typically only 20 to 22 people sitting around that table. 